also remind our church as we are ending a particular fast right now I know a lot of people are continuing until 21 days not just full fast from eating but uh, Daniel fast I know some people came up to me that what they're doing just from sun up to sundown for next 21 days uh, I'm personally doing a few things for 21 days that were very very attaching to my heart and I'm trusting God and believing praying not just for God to give me something new. God has fortunately blessed me personally in that stage of my life. I have a beautiful wife, I have a wonderful home, fabulous car and I have a ministry. But the thing that I know my life is not about me. My life is about the purpose and your life is about the purpose and the vision of impacting the world for Christ. We are believing this year as I announced last Sunday for a 1000 soul harvest this year. Can somebody say amen. We will impact millions globally and thousands locally. Can somebody say amen. I ask you that as you're fasting don't never fast to lose weight. That's a, by, by the, when you're praying don't just pray to be religious. Th those things they're just side effects. Pray fast and give with a purpose and don't just set the purpose I want to get new shoes. You'll get thousands of new shoes. Don't just pray just God just give me just one million. That, that's good but just pray for a million souls. Believe with big things because when you ask for those things like God told Solomon. He says because you ask for wisdom the things you didn't ask I will add them to you. See there are prayer requests that you pray and the things you don't pray God adds to the prayer requests you do pray. See I'm not praying for a thousand souls because I'm a fool. I know the heart of God and God knows my desire and your desire. When you cry out for souls, when you believe for souls something happens. The things you deep desire but you don't even bring them to the surface because you say they're important. I'm going to work on them but God in His grace is going to supply those needs. Can somebody say amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I want to just give a very short report that we are very very huge there's two main visions in our church one is thousands locally the second one is millions globally meaning our local church here is to impact our community and to impact the world through our church and God is bringing new people every single service our youth services are growing things are going to be even going further and further through our conferences through the internship through the trips and everything but the part of our ministry that is also very huge is to impact the world is to impact the world and that is done typically through the trips I take I'm gonna leave tonight in, a, in about a few hours uh, go preach about nine times and be back on Friday night and so I'm really believing first to meet Pastor Benny and uh, and secondly to see people healed and to see people delivered and so the trips that I take the trips that our pastors take and through our television and ministry through our social media through YouTube through live stream we believe through these venues and then we believe one day that God is going to allow us to have crusades and conferences in other parts of the world in other parts that are not in our city but everything great starts small I want to just give you a little uh, overview those of you who are members class on Friday you heard this uh, last year just through our YouTube we had uh, just through our YouTube we had first of all through our website 66 visitors 66,000 visitors visited our website and our website received 113,000 visits in just one year 113,000 visits on the average person spent three minutes on our website which is amazing most of the websites fight create funny contact put nude pictures on the first front to keep people for 30 seconds for three minutes people stay on our website on the average and so I believe that there's something that God is already doing through our YouTube last year we have had 7 million 300,000 minutes of been watched of our videos in the whole year 7 million minutes on the average person watched our YouTube for 11 minutes straight we had 6,590 shares of our videos and we've gained two and a half thousand new subscribers as of today I think we have about seven thousand subscribers on YouTube in our Facebook just in the last year alone we've gained about three thousand likes and as of now we have about six and a half and to put that in perspective not to brag but in Tri-Cities 
um, we are like on the top and the church be behind us is a very wonderful church that we, we love Bethel Church which has about six three thousand likes so a little just a little difference and so uh, and this is to show this is this is not to compare but this is to show that we are very strategic thousands locally well Bethel is doing thousands locally a little bit better uh, but and millions globally amen and we will impact the world with the message of Jesus Christ let's put our hands together one more time for Jesus Christ and everyone who is watching us even right now you know we, we welcome you and we want to let you know that this this is the place that you can watch and benefit from as we are going to go into the message today um, I will have quite a few scriptures that I will quickly go through uh, if you miss some of the notes I want to remind you if you have a U version Bible you can follow hungry generation and or you can click on the three little arrows on the way up bottom of your U version and the notes of the whole message is there you can follow them through and even save them on your own phone I want to speak this morning and if the Lord wills for next few weeks about a rhythm of revival next Sunday we want to do a special prayer of praying against addictions the bad addictions and the good addictions we want to really spend time praying for that each service that we pray in here we pray for the viewers those parts are cut and also uploaded to our website as some of you know Google has granted us our church ten thousand dollars each month to spend in Google searches so ten thousand dollars is spent and there's a big portion of that money that goes in to reach all around America that if somebody types prayer on Google that we show up first and they, they go to a link where we show our prayers and they can submit their prayer requests so these prayers that we pray every service as we're going to pray for today it's also just for us and it's also to impact people who are outside of us amen a rhythm of revival uh, I remember uh, driving on the Sylvester Street and seeing the the Seventh-day Adventist Church they have these awesome quotes and they had this quote this week may your troubles be as long as your New Year's resolutions I'm like that will preach uh, New Year's New Year's resolutions are good but what's better is when you turn your new year's resolutions into new year routines when you establish a rhythm when you establish a momentum when you just establish certain consistency in your life we see that in the scriptures that Jesus was very interested in his followers that they not just have the leaps of faith but they have a lifestyle of faith we know people in the bible who had leaps of faith you know the woman with the issue of blood she had great faith blind Bartimaeus had great faith Ilya mentioned today about the woman who had a daughter she had great faith centurion he had a great faith we see the guy whose daughter was dead he had great faith and these guys had great leaps of faith and disciples they always struggle with their faith every rebuke disciples got is always you don't have enough faith why are you doubting why are you afraid because lifestyle of faith is not developed in the moment it's not developed because you have a problem it's developed because you're close to God and God produces something inside of your spirit that changes your inner substance and it's interesting in the book of Acts you don't see the woman with the issue of blood you don't see the blind Bartimaeus you don't see the ten lepers you don't see none of the guys who had leaps of faith the people who changed the world are those who struggled with their faith and then had a lifestyle of faith that's why the Bible says righteous they live not just jump for a moment of need but it's a lifestyle whether I'm sick or healthy blessed or struggling financially marriage is doing good or not I'm developing a rhythm and that rhythm results in me not just having a miracle having miracles and becoming someone else's miracle and somebody say amen and so this is what I want to talk about today the benefit of developing a lifestyle developing a consistency will be I will focus a little bit more on healing I'll have a few quotes that I came across what it says all bad habits start slowly and gradually and before you know you have a habit and then the habit has you bad habits are like a comfortable bed very easy to get into 
very hard to get out of. Habits are like a cable. We weave a strand of it every day and soon it cannot be broken. A statistic says there's a 2190 rule. It takes 21 days to create a habit. 90 days to make it into a lifestyle. Many people take 21 days for example and they create a habit. Creating a habit does not change it into a lifestyle. It takes 90 days of something for it to become your lifestyle. For example, if you want to get fit this year and you sign up to gym and for the next 21 days you go to gym, that is great. That a small little flickering light. But for that to change your life, you got to keep it at least for 90 days. And then as another university did a study that the Duke University researcher in 2006 found that more than 40% of all our actions that people perform each day aren't actual decisions. They're automatic. Your health will become automatic. Positive thinking becomes automatic. Healthy financial decisions like saving and investing becomes automatic. Waking up early becomes automatic. You know, watching your sugars become automatic. Coming to church on time instead of 10 minutes late comes automatic. You know, tithing, giving, all of those things become, become automatic. For something to become automatic, you create a habit. And then you fight for that habit to become a lifestyle. And then it just goes automatically. Can somebody say amen? In the Bible we see also many scriptures for example like Paul his custom was to go to the church in Acts 17 verse 2. We see Jesus often withdrew into wilderness to pray in Luke chapter 5 verse 16. In Luke chapter 4 verse 16 the Bible says that Jesus had a custom. On the Sabbath he would go to church. People have a custom today to sleep in on Sunday instead of going to church. And they're saying, I'm more like Christ because I love God. I don't like the church. Jesus had a custom. The synagogue that crucified him, he went there every Sabbath. That was his custom. The Bible says Daniel prayed three days as his custom was. It says three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as was his custom since early days. As a teenager, Daniel pray three times a day. He was nobody. He was a eunuch so most likely to remove his manhood. His, he was a slave. He continued to pray and then he endured through four dynasties and he always remained on the top and impacted the Babylonian kingdom and impacts the world today. His habit was praying three times a day. Most of us we have a great habit. If this would have been written about us we say our habit and custom is to eat seven times a day. Let's learn something from Daniel and then we'll learn from the Bible to continue in the Lord. To continue in the grace of God. To continue in faith and this they will just switch them really quickly. Continue earnestly in prayer. To continue in brotherly love and to continue to believe in the Lord. Bible all over is pushing this idea. God doesn't want you to have a mountaintop experience. God wants you to have a lifestyle in which you see God's glory and God's power. That you don't look back to your old days when you prayed. When that's when you fasted. That's when you saw the glory of God. But your past days yesterday, today and tomorrow. I talked to Apostle Jan Chi yesterday and so I asked him how the New Year's service went and uh, he had a prayer line yesterday and he said his prayer line on New Year's was good. Just, just three people got out of the wheelchairs. They're gonna testify. He said, that's just, just three people that are gonna get out of the wheelchairs. It's just, just the lifestyle. And he doesn't have that where once in a very long time some big happens. Every service something good happens. And God wants us to live it like that as a church and to live it like that as individuals. Can somebody say amen? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. With me setting this up, I'm going to go briefly into the Word of God. If you have your Bible, let's go together to Luke chapter 17 verse 11 and verse 19. And we will take our proof text from there. If you can make it maybe one verse at a time. It's a little bit too much. It's kind of hard to see. Then he entered a certain village. There met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. They lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. So it was as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice, somebody say loud voice. 
he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan so Jesus answered and said were not the ten cleansed where are the nine were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner and he said to him arise go your way your faith has made you well leprosy uh, like they call it Hansen's disease today that's not very rare in the country we're living in in other countries tropical nations there it's it's still a very prevalent disease the word leprosy is mentioned about 68 times in the bible and many times it's mentioned as a reference and a lot of scholars and bible theologians they use it as a reference to sin because as leprosy leprosy is ugly Le leprosy is loathsome it's incurable and it's contaminating it separates man it separates men from society and from their family actually in Leviticus even if if you're a leper and you wore a garment that garment had to be burned because leprosy come in contact with it and that's exactly what happens when we live in sin if we put on sin we we have to go to fire because God has nothing to do with sin God separates himself from that but today I don't want to spiritualize this story that will do an injustice to, injustice to the text because in reality Jesus didn't heal them of sin. He healed them of a skin disease. Incurable skin disease. And Jesus in the Bible presents to us as our healer both for our body and for our soul. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. He is the healer for your soul and healer for your body. Our soul plays a very big role in our health many times when people get abused or they experience rejection they develop wounds and the wounds that are neglected become infected wounds that are neglected become infected and they attract demonic activity in the person's life when the person goes through rape when the person goes through molestation abandonment when the person goes through fatherlessness when harsh words are spoken to them it wounds their soul and if the Lord Jesus Christ and his word the church and home group and counseling doesn't surround to bring healing that person develops an infection which is already unfair what happened to them and now that infection calls out to demons to come and torment them but Larson when we were I took him we took him out to eat after one of the uh, conferences and Bob Larson looked at me and he said this he said Vlad when I go outside of America the number one cause for demonic possession in people is witchcraft in America he said number one cause for demonic possession is abuse more demons attack people in America because of abuse as in other countries because of involvement with the cult and witchcraft Jesus is our healer in our heart and in our body. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We see that these lepers they were together and when they saw Jesus they cried out for mercy. I want you to write down point number one. They asked for mercy not an explanation. Jesus was God. I'm pretty sure that they didn't deserve to be lepers. I'm pretty sure like everyone else if you have a skin disease where your nerves are numb and you can cut your finger and not even feel it yet you feel excruciating pain. You can never be in a society because your disease is so contaminated that if you come in contact with someone else the other person gets the same disease. You can never visit your family, you, you, you're in isolation, you can't work and everywhere you see people you have to scream out loud unclean, unclean. And here is a God who is sovereign, who allowed this to happen. He's walking in your street. If you would have the opportunity to ask Jesus one question in this sickness, in this pain, a lot of us what we would do is we would first ask him why did this happen to me? Why did you allow me to be abused? Why did you allow me to get these tumors in my body? Why did you allow this problem in my bones or in my blood or in my kidneys? Why did you allow someone to mess with me with why I was so innocent? Why? But see lepers knew they only have one chance. Questions are important but they're not going to fix the skin. Only his mercy will. 
and so they said they put their questions aside and they recognize that when you come before God you must come with a broken attitude not demanding healing but asking for mercy I'm gonna we're charismatic you know Pentecostal loud church we believe in rebuking shouting confessing possessing blab it grab it name it claim it it's important to understand we demand from the devil we command the circumstances but we don't command and demand with God God we commune with God we fellowship with God we get broken before God we lay before him and say Lord your will be done we recognize he sits above the earth see the earth is just a small little planet there's over a hundred earths will fill the sun and our galaxy alone our galaxy fits about stars that are size of our sun about 100 billion and then there is 100 billion galaxies and there is God so when you come throwing your fist you're a speck God sits above the galaxies the Bible says heaven is my throne and the earth is just my footstool that's why it's important when you come to God he says and on him I will look he who trembles before my word and who has a contrite heart when you come to him not demanding but pleading asking surrendering your life this is what happens you then is empowered to rebuke and to demand from the devil and somebody say amen you know there was a prodigal son and the prodigal son had this issue is that he knew his rights he knew his rights he knew what belonged to him and he came to his father and he said father please divide your inheritance among me and my brother which is another words to say father please die faster and give me the money he didn't care about his father he just cared about his rights and the father who if that would have been my father he says get lost really I'm gonna give you inheritance you want me dead go I won't say <laughs> just 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 leave and the father it's amazing how the father is so gracious even with the stupidity of his son with the foolishness with the fact that he doesn't care about the father he only cares about the stuff and the father is still big enough to have mercy instead of in spite of his foolishness yet his foolishness didn't have mercy on him the father gives him what he needs he leaves he squanders everything and then he comes back to the father and this is what he said to his father he said father make me like your servants See, God wants you to come to him with an attitude not just you owe me not just with your rights never focus on your rights with God focus on your relationship and then you will stand in your rights to tell the devil to give back to slow down to get out then you will look at the mountain and the mountain will obey you our words have no power against the circumstances and demons if they first were not empowered in our communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen ask for mercy not an explanation come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ I want you to write down point number two is that Jesus does not only heal them when they prayed he healed them when they obeyed Jesus heals when you pray and when you obey I want you to see this paradox Jesus does not touch the lepers like he did in the other instance he doesn't they don't touch him from a distance Jesus says go and show yourself to the priest means go and show yourself to the priest the priests at the time were not just the pastors they were also the physicians because for you to have a clean bill of health from your skin disease and to live in a society you have to get a clean bill of health from the priest so priest was also like a doctor so Jesus is telling them go and show yourself to the priest Jesus nowhere indicated they will get healed Jesus nowhere promised they will get healed and the scripture says as they heard that and they walked as they walked they were healed see some healings come when you pray when someone prays some healings come when you obey and work out the scripture in your personal life 
this testimony was so beautiful today I had an opportunity after prayer this morning to to go home and watch this testimony I told my wife I was like you gotta put this testimony in because this is so powerful of how a man heard a four four stage terminal disease and on his own took the word of God nobody prayed for him and he started to obey the word of God work the word of God and the power of Jesus that is manifested through prayer and through obedience kicked in through obedience and it dumbfounded the doctors and it strengthened his faith and today it strengthened your faith as well can somebody say amen the bible says that God sent his word and he healed them the scripture also says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my saying do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the middle of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. In original Hebrew, the word health to all their flesh is the same word for medicine. God is saying through this word, my son, he's speaking to you, my daughter, give attention to my words, incline your ear to what I say, do not let them depart from your eyes. And if you don't know how to do that, the way you do it with Facebook. So it's kind of about the same. Keep them in the midst of your heart. That's how Snapchat is. For they are alive and God says the other things are good. But this is life to those who find them. And if you are sick, this is medicine. See God's word is not just, it's not just letters on the page. In the spiritual world, in the area of your body where you don't see your colon, you know, a colon, you don't see your kidneys, you don't see your blood vessels, you don't see your bones, but in the spiritual structure of your body, which created by the word. God says, my words that created your body. If you allow them to go inside and you keep them inside and follow these instructions, they will become a medicine to the very organs I created with my word. Can somebody say amen? Put your hands together for Jesus. When you go to the doctor, sometimes the doctor will perform a surgery on you on the spot. If you have a dislocated shoulder, he'll put it right back in. If you have a certain thing, I've been twice operated. I go into the doctor and uh, they put me under a little, little thing. I knock out and then the doctor takes his little thing and he cut a little bit of my eye and did some stuff and didn't really help too much. But nevertheless, he did it right there. He didn't give me no medicine to take home. That's how he cured. The second way most doctors will treat you is not in the room is they will give you this thing called prescription where you go and get medicine and on the medicine you see the prescription of taking this once a day twice a day three times or seven times a day and then you go home you apply the medicine and then the medicine begins to do the magic in your life can someone say amen that's how Jesus is many times Jesus will heal right in the service somebody's praying on tv boom healing came to your body you go to a conference boom healing came into your body but there are many healings our lord the physician will heal people by not doing it in the room but by giving them instructions to follow in his word prescription and as they follow the prescription it begins to manifest in their body and somebody say amen medicine the word of God is like medicine if you can put up the, the the things how the word of God is like medicine the word of God is like medicine in the fact that it's a healing agent the word of God is a healing agent to your body like medicine is is a healing agent you look at that little tablet like how in the world is this small tablet knows my headache I mean have you ever thought about how will it this this Advil pill what if I mean that's gonna go down my head is right here I need to go up but somehow that pill was designed. When you look at that, you don't question it. You don't Google it. You don't try to understand it. You trust the doctor. You swallow that thing up. And next thing that happens is that your headache, which is up and the pill went down, begins to subside. If you look at the second thing that this does, the healing, the medicine, the word of God is like healing. What it does is it has no respect out of persons. Medicine doesn't look at you if you're white, black, young, old. Medicine works for everyone who applies it. Amen. Medicine also does not work in the bottle. If you bring the bottle home and you clean the bottle, you lick the bottle, you blow the bottle, you put it in a golden vase, medicine will never work in the bottle. It only works in you. 
same thing is with the word of God the word of God as long as it's on your phone it won't work as long as it's on your shelf it doesn't work you have to start taking the word from the Bible the Bible says put it in the midst of your heart not in the midst of your room not just in the midst of your Facebook post. We, I see verses coming up to me every day. I ask one man, how do you read your Bible? He says, every day Bible version just sends me a one inspiring verse. That is awesome. But when you're sick, not enough. And medicine takes time to work. If you take an Advil pill, for example, if you have a headache or if you have some other thing, you understand, you don't expect in a split second. Go, the only time that happens if you take drugs. But medicine doesn't work like heroin. Medicine, it takes time, 20, 30 minutes. You wait, you don't go panic, go to the doctor and say, oh, you lied to me, you're such a horrible person, you're abusing the, the hurting people. No, you allow time to, for that medicine to soak in in your body. Same thing with God's word. You go in applying God's word, you don't just drop it next week, uh, it didn't work. You didn't take it long enough for that to begin to kick in your life. Can somebody say amen? I read a testimony this week of two teachers in a Christian school. Both of these teachers, one teacher had a class of children with disabilities and the other teacher had a class with children who were at risk and they had very big problems, very big behaviors. Not mental but very um, big uh, emotional behavior and a lot of bad reckless behavior in school. So they put them in a separate class for these teachers. What these teachers started to do, it's a Christian school, so what they did is they, they started to each day before each lesson they made a list of about 10 healing verses and they had the whole class read the healing verses together with the teacher every time they had a class. By the end of the school year all of the kids in a special learning disability were dismissed into the normal school and normal classes. Parents were coming and asking the teacher what did you do with our children? They were they did not even know what was happening when they were reading those healing verses before the class something was happening medicine was being put in into their bones into their brain nerves into their brain chemicals things were being changed amen i heard a story of one doctor who had a lady and she was on a stage four last stage last stage not stage four last stage of tuberculosis and this doctor was treating her. She was a Christian doctor and this lady, she was also a Christian. And so what she decided to do to this lady, she was so bad already. Her body was so bad that she couldn't uh, speak. She couldn't lift her hands and she couldn't move. And she was just, she just completely, just dead. Completely gone. And what the doctor started to do is that instead of meeting with her and going through dialysis and then going through all of these things, she opened book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and she started to read to her book of the Deuteronomy actually every few days. Just read it and read it and after a while she starts seeing in her eyes just a spark, spark in her eyes. Her body still was the same. After about a week or so she started to move her lips. Within another week she started to move a little bit of her body to the point until she started reading the Deuteronomy chapter 28 by herself and at one particular time this doc, doctor documented that he said I saw when she was reading that in front of me that was the doctor's appointment with the patient he said I saw faith fill her he said you could feel that in the room and the lady jumped out from the chair and never had tuberculosis again <laughs> same thing happened to Derek Prince when Derek Prince was in the army world war ii and he was stationed in in Egypt and he infected a skin disease and because he stayed in Egypt it was very hot there it was actually very bad for the disease things were getting worse and worse he became bed stricken so he just laid on his bed he couldn't move he was already not able to participate in the army and the doctor said there's nothing we can do and so Derek Prince just gotten saved he's just gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit in that little hospital room he had a King James version of the Bible he decided since I'm gonna be laying here I'm just gonna go ahead and get myself acquainted with the Bible he took a highlighter and decided to highlight every scripture in the Bible that referred to healing or health. He was surprised how many times it referred to those topics. As he got to the verse we read today where God says, hear my words, put them inside of your heart, there are medicine in your heart. Him knowing a little bit of Hebrew, he knew what that word health meant. He made a promise with God that from now on he's going to write all the healing verses and take them as he takes his medicine. He took medicine three times a day before the meal. So what he did, he 
He went to his doctor and he says, doctor, give me one month. For one month, I want to run as a trial. I'll have my own medicine from my doctor. He said, who is the doctor? He said, I'll tell you after one month. He says, and I'm going to try that medicine. Before he would go to eat in the cafeteria or they were bring him food, he would take the healing verses and just glean through them. In the morning, before lunch, and same thing in the evening. He did that month after month. He said, I saw improvement in my body. And then the camp moved to Kenya. And Kenya has even worse weather. Where the strongest and the healthiest soldiers start getting sick with the same disease. And he started to recover and recover. And he says, within six to something months, I completely recovered. And never again in his life had a symptom of skin disease. The power of God's word. It's very important to treat God's Word as medicine. Not as a book you need to read, not just something I need to get through the plan. This is your medicine. If you have cancer, if you have tumors, if you have high blood pressure, if you have gastritis, any kind of skin disease, maybe some kind of attack even on your mind, if you have emotional breakdown because of the abuses or because of negligence, abandonment you received in your family. I give you a cure. Jesus is a great physician. The health plan is free. No side effects. Did you see those commercials? Especially like the, the ones that improve the sex life. Take one pill. You will have the night of your life. Oh, you will have bleeding. Your blood will go through the roof. You will, you can develop cancer and it goes for five minutes, the whole list. You're like, never mind. I don't want the night of my life. I don't want it to end in a funeral. You know, I know that by FDA, they have to mention the side effects, but this, um, a medicine is great. But most of the medicine side effects is actually sometimes as bad as the very sickness it's treating. Jesus' side effects is, guess what you're going to lose? Depression, sleepless nights, nightmares, sexual dreams, suicidal tendencies, high blood pressure. You will lose the sin, the devil and the curses in your life. Come on somebody, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. As we're going to approach the throne of God today, I want you to write the last thing is the power of the testimony. The power of the testimony. Their skin got healed because they cried out. But this boy, this man, when he came and he cried out in worship now, Jesus said, you are well. The word well in original language, in original, it says sozo. Sozo means healing, deliverance and, and salvation. Not just healing, but it speaks of the whole package. I want to tell you something about our church. It's very important why we do testimonies. Uh, I've looked through the services online in, the, in our community and most of the churches, if you go on our website, you will see our service is uh, 90 minutes, which is an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes on the average. And so uh, when we had to input on our website, we couldn't say 90 minutes because our services are <laughs> two hours, sometimes a little bit more. And I'm looking back and like, Lord, how could we make it a little bit more to draw people in? worship is important you know giving is important the message is important prayer is important you know and the part where I've never seen in church services on a regular basis is the testimonies and our testimonies they take a large, large amount of time I want to tell you why these testimonies exist Jesus rebuked the nine who didn't testify he says, where are the nine? You would think Jesus gives it for free. Why is he expecting something? He gives it for free. He's not expecting a payment. He's not expecting you to even change your life. He just says, I want you to testify. Why? There's three reasons to testimony. The first one is it glorifies Jesus. The second one is it builds other people's faith. When you testify, another person can get a miracle. That's why the Bible says we overcome the devil by the power of our testimony see when you testify someone who's bound by the devil can get a hope of how they can get out from the very bondage they are in when you don't testify Jesus doesn't get the glory people don't get the faith to get change in their life and thirdly when we testify it unlocks more blessings see the first time Jesus spoke to them they all got pro skin problem fixed the second time he came and testified Jesus says be sozo Meaning now be saved, now be delivered on the top of being healed. More blessings always follow when you testify. 
sometimes people say well Vlad I don't have a testimony you know why you don't have a testimony as you're too busy comparing your testimony instead of sharing your testimony you constantly compare your testimony to the one on video you compare your testimony with someone how someone shared it every person has a testimony if you don't have testimony get saved get baptized in the Holy Spirit get delivered from the devil you're like well I, I don't have those things then praise God that he, God protected you from those things that is a testimony not a lesser than the other testimony testimony that is not shared is a testimony that doesn't glorify Jesus doesn't build people's faith and it doesn't unlock more miracles the first time God did a miracle for them is for them saying God please the second miracle was but God you're awesome and they testify the second miracle God does in your life it will not be by doing what you did in the first time it's by you sharing worshiping for what he has already done even what he hasn't done yet is a little bit more than what he did as you thank him for that it unlocks doors for more